this video we're going to have a look at the different types of income and the how equitable and inequitable these different types of income are. So in the first video we looked at what was meant by factor income and factor income includes all earned income which is wages and salaries plus all unearned income which is rent, dividends and interest. Just recapping unearned income is not transfer income. So the government transfer income is money from the government for pensions or welfare that is different to unearned income. Together, earned and unearned income equal our total factor income, or the income from factors of production. There are also a range of other types of income you need to be aware of. The first one is private or market income. Private or market income is the most inequitable distri um, distribution of income, or type of income. Market or private income is the factor income, so the income that we receive from wages and interest and salaries and dividends and royalties, all these kind of things plus private transfers. So it's exactly the same as factor income, but it also includes any child support that people receive. doesn't include government transfers, just private transfers, so just things like child support. The first type of income is private or market income, and that is the income that we receive from our factors of production, plus private transfers. The second type of income, this is a little bit less inequitable, is gross income. So it's private income plus any cash benefits from the government that people receive. So this is where we include welfare and pensions and any family tax benefits you get from the government. It's before taxes. So gross income is going to be higher than private or market income because it's the same as private income and then it includes the cash benefits that low income earners get. So for a rich person, private income is likely to be pretty similar to gross income. For a low income earner, gross income is going to be much higher because they will get cash benefits. So they might have barely any private income, but then they will get, let's say, their $20,000 welfare a year or $10,000 welfare, and their gross income would be $10,000. So gross income is less inequitable than private income. Then we have disposable income. So disposable income is your gross income, so the amount that you get for your factor income plus private transfers plus any cash benefits from the government minus any direct taxes we pay. So minus any income tax. So disposable income is less than gross income because it's just basically gross income minus any taxes that we pay. Direct taxes, sorry. Disposable income is again more equitable than gross income because rich people pay more tax because of our progressive tax system. So disposable income will again be more equitable than gross income because high income earners are going to pay the most tax. Disposable income, gross income, less direct taxes. Social wage income is the fourth one. Social wage income is your disposable income. So you've got your, your market income, then you've got any of your cash benefits, then you've got your tax deducted, your direct taxes, and then we add any indirect non-cash benefits. So it's our disposable income plus indirect non-cash benefits. And that includes public housing, any public education we get access to, or um, public health, that improves our living standards. Social wage income will be higher for most people, nearly all people, than disposable income because it includes non-cash benefits received by the government. Social wage income is also more equitable than disposable income because low income earners get most of the access to indirect non-cash benefits. So low income earners are going to get more access to public housing, more access to public education, generally, not always, um, and therefore their social wage income is again more equitable. Social wage income is the most equitable distribution of income in Australia. That is the most equitable. Final income is the most uh, relevant um, distribution of income in Australia. Final income is our social wage income. So all the things uh, that have gone from the, so far. So our market income, plus any benefits from the government, minus any taxes, plus any indirect benefits, plus GST. So it in, it's basically, or oh, sorry, i start that again, minus any indirect taxes. So that would be your income after you've got your social wage income, minus any indirect taxes you pay for GST, or um, excise taxes, or taxes that you're paying on um, petrol, which is an excise tax. It's the best indicator of equality. It's often more inequitable than social wage income because most indirect taxes are regressive. So they have a regressive impact on families. 
Final income is the best indicator of our overall distribution of income and we'll have the lowest Gini coefficient. So the second lowest Gini coefficient besides social wage income. We'll talk about the Gini coefficient in the next video. Equivalised household income is disposable income altered for the size and composition of households. So it basically determines if you've got more people in your house, if you've got like 11 kids like the lady in the shoe, it divides your income based on the amount of people in the house. Although um, people under 18 don't get divided by exactly one, they have a sort of smaller ratio. But we'll talk about that a bit later on. So the types of income. Market income is plus government direct cash transfers gets you your gross income. Your gross income minus personal income tax is disposable income. Disposable income plus receipts of indirect benefits from the government is your social wage income. So these are non-cash benefits. And then your social wage income minus indirect taxes is your final income. And this is the most quoted measure of purchasing power. This one here is the most equitable. This one here is the most inequitable. Actually, market income is the most inequitable than gross income. Here's an example of a two-person economy to show you how the distribution of income in Australia works. So let's say you've got two people, Stan and Loretta. Stan earns zero dollars, Loretta earns two hundred thousand dollars. Let's say she's a doctor or a lawyer or something or an investment banker. So his market income is zero, Loretta's is two hundred thousand. Then the government gives cash benefits. They give thirty thousand to Stan in unemployment benefits and nothing to Loretta. So the distribution of income becomes more even for gross income. Stan earns thirty thousand, Loretta earns two hundred thousand. Then they start to pay income tax. So Stan doesn't pay barely any income tax. He probably would pay a little bit if he earned thirty thousand, but let's say for this video he doesn't. Loretta pays fifty thousand. She pays quite a lot because she earns a lot of money. And again, disposable income becomes more equitable. The Gini coefficient is going down. We'll talk about the Gini coefficient in the next video. The higher the Gini coefficient, the more inequitable. Then you've got your non-cash benefits. So Stan might receive, you know, public education for his kids. He may receive. He may live in public housing provided by the government. So his social wage income would be fifty thousand. Again, Loretta receives nothing, so her social wage income is one hundred fifty thousand. And suddenly, the Gini coefficient is becoming closer to zero, and the distribution of income has become more and more equitable. Okay, so in this example shows you why market income is the most inequitable because it's before any taxes or transfer of money.